Okay, so we're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. I've got them both going at once here and just checking my screen. So, and Larry, yeah, thanks for the comment there. It's always helpful when someone throws a comment. And because then I know that you're both hearing me, uh, potentially seeing me, and uh, we have a lot of stuff going. And I have my little Christmas scene going up here. And the bottom line is, let's see, I don't see the chats. Oh, there we, there we go. Okay. So one of them's coming up there, and yep. So so something's interesting. I'm not getting uh, one of the things that are happening today, and I, I have to figure out how this is going to work. All right, somebody from Detroit, Christopher. Hey, I grew up the I, I grew up in Downriver, Detroit. So glad you're there. Thanks, Tad. Good to see you, Marcus, Tom, Crystal, Larry, and Sarah. And there is something weird. If you're on Facebook. Um, it, right now that's not showing up in the uh, chats that are coming up on the screen here and I have to figure out why. I, there, uh, I've had that working before and there's something that I've done. I just put that in here today and it is, oh, it is showing both Facebook and, uh, and YouTube here. All right, so it is working. So hey, at first it wasn't working but it's not showing up in my other place here. Have multiple screens going on here, all right. Both the chats are showing, yeah, you're right, Crystal, thank you. At first it wasn't showing for me, both of them. Oh, I see why, okay. I mean, I see the screen I was looking at that was wrong. <laughs> all right, so here's, a, oh, by the way, fun thing. If you ever run into tech things that don't work, join the club. I, I, as soon as I'm trying something new, then something doesn't work sometimes. And it's part of this whole business. And what I want to do, and what you, most of us want to do is we still want to learn faster than our peers. We still want to have things work sooner than other people. We want them to be easy. And uh, sometimes there's not. No matter what you do, there's so many configurations. There's so many options. People are doing such interesting things and sometimes uh, amazing things. And sometimes I see people doing things the hard way, like I'm doing now here, where I'm going... I'm, Sometimes I've added complexity, but I add complexity usually one step at a time. For example, you know, I'm doing both uh, YouTube Live and Facebook Live at the same exact time, and then I have some software that combines the chats. And yeah, right now both chats are showing. When I first started it, I had I was getting double Facebook chats, and uh, so I was getting Facebook chats twice showing up on the screen. And now I have that solved. I, I realized, oh wait, wait. So. Our goal, we'll be talking about interfaces and mics and software and hardware and acoustics and room treatment and both hardware and software, anything related to VO that has nothing to do with voicing. That's the goal here. And it's going to be an every Tuesday event. Today I'm planning on a half hour and that's the current plan. If we go later, maybe. Uh, and then whether it'll stay at this exact time on Tuesday, I don't know. That This is the starting time. I do one with Johnny Heller every Tuesday and right now it's easier to combine and do both in the same day. That might change, but for now, Tuesdays, two o'clock, uh, two o'clock Pacific, five o'clock Eastern, and then all points in between there. All right, so happy you're there. So be sure to ask questions in the chat. All right, very helpful if you have something that you wanna talk about. And today I'm gonna to talk about interfaces and, and really what I see as the future of interfaces. And this is a little bit controversial. I had some pushback from a couple of my engineering friends that they don't like this direction but i just think this is where it's going to go and what you're going to get to do is look we'll look back at the end of this year and see what's happening but i really think uh that that we are going to always have uh forward momentum in the interface departments and i think it's all going to go to where the boxes themselves are, are going to become minimal and the hardware is going to become minimal and the software is going to continue to take over more, just like it has in almost every area of recording. I come from the old days when you had to do everything on an analog console in a recording studio. That's my roots, is recording in a big, large environment where you could have, you could have 40 mics one day, you could have 10 mics one day, that kind of thing. You could have more, depending on what you were recording. And then now you can do all that off a laptop. You literally could have, and as long as you have the interfaces set up, to, to bring in all the microphone feeds, which you can, now can get a box that's not that much bigger than a laptop, but it is a little bigger, but you can get a box that all the mics could come in and you could have 20 mics or 10 mics, and that doesn't really apply to our case. 
So the vast majority of people need less than four mics for what they're doing. There are people that need eight or 16 or 12. Just It does depend on what you're doing. In our business, voiceover, most people could get away with one. I always like to have two on my interfaces. So when uh, Focusrite has a solo, Personas has a uh, an interface that only has one inner one mic input. I always get the ones that's one model up from that. If if I was going with that, I like having two. It allows me to test. It allows me if something goes wrong with one of the interface. I've had it happen probably over the last three years, maybe ten times that somebody has called me with their interface failing. And we've been able to move them over to the other mic and just reconfigure their software. And in five minutes later, we had the other mic, the, the microphone working on the second input where the first input was not working properly. And so because that's going to come up, I'm always going to recommend that you get at least two, if you can, get two. All right. If you're budget constrained and you're going, you're, you're going minimalist to start with, cool. Do you do you do what you have to do to get started. But as you're doing this a while, anybody that has the resources get two inputs and sometimes it's good just for testing hey is it this chord versus that chord there's a lot of good reasons to start off with two and then secondarily i can show you this new little box that i have sitting here on my desk uh, let's see i gotta uh, and then uh david asks are these things going to exist to watch later oh yes of course this is going to be this will exist uh you're watching on youtube it's uh in instantly it's 100 percent available now and i have a new playlist for this so the, the playlist will contain all of them over time. And every week they will automatically go in the playlist. So there's a new playlist. And yes, it's available for replay. Somebody could start now, start later. And um, so bottom line, yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, and, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll uh, what I, here's what I should have done, by the way. I should have gone and done this. And, and that will now put it on the screen. David Martinez asks, are these things going to exist to watch later? I want to point something someone else to this, and the answer is yes. Okay, I can do that. So, um, so that's what I should have done, and I'll do it. All right. So interfaces. So I'm going to start this, and then I'll take questions and and uh, comments. And first off, you do not have to agree with me. That's fine. Respectful disagreements are welcome. I don't know everything. I know a lot. I've seen a lot. I work with a lot of people. One of the things that happens that's weird is I'll see, I, you know, I'm going to talk about an interface today. And every interface I've worked with has some issues with some people in some circumstances. So I'll get somebody who says, here's a perfect example. Focus rate at a period about three years ago, could have been four years ago, it was before the pandemic, where they had some quality control problems with, with a set of their interfaces. I, I think it probably only lasted maybe six months. But if you were one of those people that got one in that six months, you were, you were saying, wow, Focusrite just is terrible. Focusrite sold tens of thousands of interfaces. They've probably sold hundreds of thousands of them. I don't know their real numbers, so, I, I'm not, I, so don't take that as, oh, there's the number. But during, at different points, first off, knowing the background for all these interfaces, I did talk to a product manager at one of the major companies, and he told me this. There are three manufacturers in the world that create the chips that are the, a, the, the, the converters from analog to digital, uh, DCAC, ACDC converters that go back and forth. There are three chip companies in the world that create those that are used by all the different interfaces. There could be a couple exceptions today. This was a year and a half ago. I'm trying to make sure I have my time right. It might have been two and a half years ago. I think it was just before the pandemic, which actually would make it. Uh, no, the pandemic was still going on. Anyway, doesn't matter. At that point, there were three companies. It's a very specialized market. And, you know, most most it's not like something that someone will put in a car necessarily, not at the quality that we need, where they're convert, converting uh, 48 megahertz, 41.4, uh, 192, all the kind of things that have to happen in our business. It's just not a general purpose thing. So there are three. And, and he said, oh, one of the problems we have right now is everybody's, we're all having supply chain issues. And so we only get a certain number of them. And he said, you know, we're having this problem with all sorts of components. So everybody over the last couple of years has had periods where because the suppliers were so limited, Sometimes they were taking stuff. It was the only thing they could get. 
and it was mighty maybe it only had a 98 percent reliability relay uh ratio and in the old days they were used to 99.xxx and then they had a period during the pandemic where the supply chain so here's the thing you're going to get somebody on every interface you can you can have out there who says oh you know those things are crap and you're like wow i've used mine for the last five years and yes uh just like a wash machine a dryer Sometimes they work, but then if you've been doing this long enough, like I've been around for about 10 years now in the voiceover area, I've been recording for decades, but, um, and you see trends and, and then some things that the focus rate had a problem a few years ago and they've totally alleviated that whatever they had to do, their current interfaces are highly reliable, but you are going to get some people that will probably never buy another focus right interface or never buy, but I'm going to talk about a personas interface today. And you'll have some people that will never buy one because they had one that came out a year ago, two years ago, whatever, and it wasn't as reliable at that time. Chips were in short supply. I'm sure they were using stuff, the chip manufacturers. Anyway, so you, but you will have that. But what I am looking at are trends and uh, things I'll talk about. Usually I have experience where I have hundreds or three, four, five hundred people using something, then I have an idea, hey, how often does somebody call me with a problem? And by the way, if I recommend something, they tend to call me when something goes wrong. So we'll be talking about that whole thing here. So for one of the things is that, uh, um, you know, there was, oh, so, and James is saying, yeah, there was a supply chain issue with Focusrite during the pandemic. Yeah, uh, they all had it though, because there was a, li there are only a limited number of suppliers that deal with this stuff and they are and when you look at the components inside these things there are a bunch of common parts okay so what i do think well so here's my here's my prediction so you can write this down we'll revisit this sometime at the end of the year but more and more and more of the interfaces i predict will go to a software front end and they will be minimizing the hardware on the back end okay in the box so i'm going to show you an interface for example this is this is a little uh, single. This is this one just sits on my desk. It's kind of I kind of keep it as a. Let me get that on the camera there. It's a backup. Uh, I don't use it on a daily basis. I have I used it for a couple months just to see, make sure I could use it. I use a like I mentioned. I like an interface that has two inputs rather than one. This is just sitting on my desk. It's a backup, and uh, I have it sitting there in case I ever had it, wanted to test something different. I wanted to do a little demo, something like that. I can show it. But uh, anyway, so everybody's had everybody's had problems with everything over time, and I can focus right had it. Personas has had it, Apollo's had it. Everybody, they, they, there's just a small group of chip manufacturers. But here's here's a direction I think we're all going to go, and that's that the box itself will continue to get smaller in many cases. It's crazy how little this thing is. Uh, the the two channel one that I'm using, the Revelator IO24. It's a small little box. It's smaller than they've ever been, and it keeps getting smaller. It only has one knob because what they're doing is they're switching to this, and that's some sort of software interface. I don't have the Focusrite drivers installed on my machine anymore, but they also have they have some of the stuff so you can get through their software interface, and the reason this is going to happen is twofold. It is cheaper for the manufacturers to put together software than it is for hardware. Many of them can leverage software across that they're developing for other things like Personas makes mixing consoles that are three to five thousand dollars. So they have some things, some tools that they can bring and they can use them here because they've already developed them for their other products and then they can leverage them into this. So this and, and what's the big deal about something like this? They also can do an update if they find a bug, if they find something that's not working right. It's easy to update the software and put out a new version. If there's a security problem, if the operating system changes and needs a change, they can update the secure, the uh, software. And that's what we're doing with our DAWs. We get updates for our DAW. How often do you get an update for your DAW? I don't care what you're using. They've all had updates over the last five years and they will continue to have updates. So they add features and they fix bugs. And there is no piece of software out there that does not have bugs. They all have some bugs, okay? Now, the reason I see this thing, this, this is an example. I think they will all do this. I don't think they can not do it for the simple reason that now most of us are doing a combination of this sort of thing where we're streaming things. It's becoming more and more popular. If you're a voiceover artist, 
You're going to be on Discord. You're going to be on TikTok. You're going to be on Facebook. You're going to be on YouTube. You are. We're all doing something in the social media. And I have something. I have different presets that are set up. One for when I do OBS. One when I do Zoom. Uh, that way, I have different configurations. And here's a simple example. When I show you what I have on my main stream here, which this is what's going out and feeding you. You are getting this on this stream mix. You'll notice this fader here is turned all the way down. I switch to this one, and this is what is actually feeding my main mic into my DAW. If I turn this one on, then now this is here. And what I have is a situation that by, by changing between my presets, I have different configurations for different things. If I want to play back my DAW into this, by the way, this would sound terrible. It looks great. It looks great. I cheated this year. I rebuilt this. I, uh, I built one of these in the old days, and I had to manually kind of scale its volume down. All I did, this is just a regular stream of audio, and then I turned on clip gain. I right-clicked. I did all this work, and I made a little envelope there so that it would it would be uh, looking more, a little bit like a Christmas tree, and I put in the colors and whatever. Okay, that was kind of one of those... How do you want? How does Don want to waste 15 minutes of his time? And that's what I did, uh, but I I do it every year anyway. So, but if I want to play this back, uh, I'm going to show you pulled out this meter. By the way, I leave this meter behind me. <laughs> I cheat, but that way it's on my screen, so I get to see it clearly and look at the camera and see all my audio working. But what I'm going to do is go behind the scenes. All right, this is the Wizard of Oz. Ignore the man behind the curtain, and I'll watch this. It comes down from behind me. Let me move this out here. All right. This is my microphone right here. And let me get the, uh, the, uh, in this interface back up here. And I have this sitting right here. And what you see is right now there's signal coming out here. That's feeding this right here. That's what's feeding uh, the you. You are listening to this right here. When I play back audio here, let me see if I can get all out. Oh, uh, let me reconfigure this. All right. So you can see right now, I have this. This is going to be when I play back from my DAW. And then I have a couple other things here. All right, you see that right there, that played on that meter there and didn't play over here. All right, I'm gonna do that again real quick. And then at some point, okay, now, now I have that turned way up because it's something I was doing earlier. But, but, but that's what this allows me to do is later today when I'm done with this to just switch to a different preset and I also, so I can play, I could play Studio One through this if I, if I needed to because I'm streaming and I want to go over here and I want to play this. Let me get this out of the way. Get this over here. You'll watch this meter here. Stella sat on the back. Okay, so that was playing out of meter number two. It keeps me, it keeps Studio One, RX, I could do Reaper. It doesn't matter. And I can have presets all set up in advance so that I don't have to change my configuration just because I'm switching between broadcasting this way. I have different needs when I'm, I'm using Zoom. If you're using Skype, you might have a different preset for that. And I can do them all, and I don't have to think about it. And if I wanted to get a little fancier, which I don't in most cases, I also have the ability to go in and turn on a compressor and I have different types of compressors and I can just switch between them and see different things, different kinds of EQs from the old school to the standard one. But this is the weird thing about this. All this stuff is just leverage from tools they already have. Now, if you're a, if you are a manufacturer of interfaces, you have to compete because the reality is at the chip level, that that chip technology has gotten so good it's getting beyond people's ability to hear and that's a cool thing on one hand but it means well how do i how do i get you to buy a new interface if your current interface is working well well i tell you now i can do 192 i can do some fancy things now whether that's hearable or not is a whole nother discussion we will have those discussions here um another another day but the point is is that these software interfaces, I predict, from watching this over a crazy amount of time, is where everybody's going to go. I also don't have to touch my interface. Let me see if I get this on the screen. This is my, these are my speakers, and these are my headphones. And this is the mix between what's coming off the computer into my headphones or my speakers, whether I want, all, I, whether I want my mic to play 100% of the time or just part of the time. 
But the big deal about it is I don't have to touch the interface in order to make things work. One of the things that when you get into these little, little boxes here is these have one knob and you press the knob and it cycles through. There's a little, little, little meter down here, an, an interface that you can watch and you can press this button and a couple of these other buttons. I just never do it. I'm too lazy. And what happens is I can change all the parameters. I can do everything that I can do in this big interface here off of this little box, but it's a pain. I mean, I wouldn't do it. As a matter of fact, I would probably throw the thing out the window if that's the only interface I had. Although I, I have to admit, once it's set up, I don't change it that often. But there are times I'll be listening to something on YouTube. I'll be listening to something on, on uh, whatever, some other streaming service, but YouTube primarily uh, or, and, and, or Facebook Live. And I do need to turn up my speakers. I do sometimes turn up my headphones, but I never have to touch the interface because all that is here and the flexibility to switch back and forth between different configurations. For voiceover artists, I mean, this thing's a hundred bucks. It's on sale for a hundred. It's normally 200 or normally, I think it's a hundred. It's been on sale for about 150 for a while. Now it's on sale for a hundred dollars. It's a crazy good deal. And it has two inputs and it does all the right things. So you can have two mics there and you can control everything from here. The Focusrite have a control panel on both the PC and the Mac where you can do things like make sure that it, it retains your 48 volts and the sample rate and some other things. Um, so even they have, they have these interfaces and over time they will have more ability to shape the sound different ways. It's really, I don't want any of that going into my DAW. I turn it off to go to my DAW, okay? So you should know that. And my DAW has better quality I mean, like upgraded versions of all these, it's not really better quality, but upgraded versions of all the tools that are sitting here in the software interface are available in my DAW. So I don't use any of these for normal day-to-day -day recording. Now, on the other hand, for sending out to you for these live things, yeah, now I'm experimenting with it. I've got a high pass filter here at 80. That's just, I have that set because I'm doing a live broadcast. And because I'm doing a live broadcast, I don't really have anything in my environment, I don't think, that's that low. But if I accidentally bump my desk or something, I just there's no value in there for you to hear the stuff below 80 in my voice. It's just not going to make, it's not going to enhance your experience. It just doesn't make any difference. Now, going up to 160, that's a little different. That would change me too much, and uh, I'm not going to do that. But I could use all these other things, and I just don't. I, I, I'm... I'm fairly raw on this stuff, so that's fine. Going into the DAW, I've got all the tools set up there for that. All right, so to, to recap, and then I'm gonna take questions and, and talk about anything that anybody else wants to talk about. And by the way, yeah, I'm talking about interfaces today. I do believe this is the future. You will see more software interfaces where you, don't, you do not need to touch your interface. And by the way, I would prefer that my interface is sitting next to my computer, which I don't like having in my recording space. And so I don't want this box Mine actually s sit underneath my monitors where I, can't, I can reach under my monitor. I can grab it and pull it out if I ever want to, but I don't. But I can do it if I want to. And the whole idea is, hey, like at my son's house, all of his gear is outside of his booth. Um, and does it really matter? They don't put up that much heat. They're not that hot, but they do put out some small amount of heat and not much. But one of the things about that people don't understand about computers or, or devices that don't have fans is that you and I are responsible to keep them at a moderate temperature. So even a laptop that doesn't have a fan, even the Mac minis, which do not have fans, if you get them in an environment that's extra warm, that lowers their reliability over time. So don't do that. It's just easier, the things that have fans or the things that produce heat to leave them outside the booth and not have the booth heating up unless you want a space heater or something, you know, but then get a space heater. Uh, it doesn't make sense to have the interface doing that. So what I see, the whole world will go to smaller and smaller boxes, less components, hardware that can fail or that needs to be updated. Um, and I'll talk about reliability in just a minute, but uh, we, we want less in that box and more that goes to software because they can constantly innovate, they can constantly upgrade the tools, they can constantly make it better because the computers just have so much excess power for what we're doing. 
when you're running a DAW, you do not need a lot of power. Uh, if you're running an RX, hey, it'll chew all the power you can get for it, okay? So I see it going to more and more of these interfaces. This one's 100 bucks right now. This one even includes a copy of Studio One Artist, but point being, for 100 bucks, this is worth having as a backup, if nothing else. Uh, I already have two of them sitting here. I'm ordering two more this month while they're on sale just for backups, all right? Or if someone needs something, somebody has a crisis, I can go ahead and help them out and let them borrow one of mine. But point being, they're just, they've gotten so cheap. And, oh, one final thing. And I'm going to actually get a bunch of hate mail on this one. There's a lot of interfaces out there that are that cost a lot more. And what I challenge you is when we don't have any effects on them, uh, the, the chip technology has gotten so good that the, the, we get into the rounding errors in terms of, of upgraded audio from an interface that costs, because that's one of the problems. Because they've taken out most of the hardware, they can do them cheap. And because they can do them for a lot less than what they used to, people are, are misled into thinking that a $500 or my favorite new Neumann interface is $1,800 and that that's going to be dramatically better than a $100 one. The reality is doing a single voice, I, I challenge people to do blind testing. Let somebody else do the, do the raw recordings off of one mic with a splitter going into both interfaces and then ABM to where you don't know what they are. And a lot of times nobody can hear the difference. It's just so it's, we're getting into a zone here because of the chip technology that it's pretty wild. So anyway, I don't know. I have, I don't have the Neumann one. So that's possible for 1800 bucks. It better sound better than this hundred dollar one, but I'm very skeptical of that. Okay. And I do know the math. I, I, I love physics. Physics has been a uh, kind of a side hobby of mine for decades. And I look at the math and I just, uh, and then I listen to the results because I'm kind of a nutcase about that. And I'm like, okay, this will be interesting. But uh, so I've got to get, a, I, I need to get a demo unit, unit of one of those and do some comparisons on that. But anyway, when you're under a thousand dollars, if you're not using any of the utilities, and some of the great DAWs now have amazing, amazing utilities, meaning limiters, compressors. Um, the tools that we need for voiceover are just a couple things. We need a great EQ, great limiter, a great compressor. If you have those three, those are the core. Everything else, not gonna necessarily, might make you sound different, won't make you sound better. So those are really good. Let me look at questions here and see what we have going on there. All right, so. Uh, Tom says, agreed, reliability, planning for exceptional circumstances, save my butt. Yeah, and radio and theater, of course, yes. Uh, and everyone should have a backup of their interface. Should have a backup of all your cables. We got to talk about that. Should have a backup mic. You de but I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to summarize that. Have a backup cable for every single cable you have out there. <laughs> Don't go without that. You'll get burned. And I used to kind of wonder, well, why, how, how, how in the world is a cable that never moves fail one day? Well, there's electricity running through those things. They actually get a little warmer and cooler based on how much signal is running through them at all times. And the solder joints inside wires are tiny. They're all machine done these days. And those solder joints are really, really, really tiny. Or, and however they're joining them, they're just not very big. And things expand and contract as they heat and cool. So you take a wire that's been sitting someplace for five years and you never move it, you still can have the darn thing fail. And that depended on how it was made when it was initially made. And if they're doing wires and putting the ends on wires, those machines are doing, I don't know, 200 an hour, uh, 2,000 an hour, 5,000 an hour, they're putting the ends on. They're just cranking this stuff out at, at an amazing speeds. And so one of the little solder joints may not be as strong as it could be, and it works fine for the initial testing, works for a couple of years. As it heats up and it's a minuscule amount, it expands and contracts, and then it has a little tiny crack one day. So a mic, it just drove me crazy. How could a mic cable sitting there someday end up failing? Well, it's called physics, and I just didn't know that was the way why, but you will see mics, the number one failure point. I have people call me all the time. My mic isn't working. And it's like, can we, let's, you have other cables? Yeah, put one in. Boom, it works. It's the number one failure point are cables. So let me, let me look at the, uh, 
let me look at the uh, what's going on there. Yeah, and uh, once again, James, yes, there was supply, by the way, so it wasn't just focus right during the pandemic. Um, is Yes, so uh, let me put that up there. So we have, is Universal Vault Audio my interface? Yes, it is. That's a, that. Those are good. Uh, you mentioned Personas. I had a recent interface of theirs. I'm not getting a lot of gain out of it. Got the gain turned way up. Something like a cloud lifter available? Yes, although I don't remember what DAW you're using. Uh, first off, not much gain. The, the, there are a set of microphones that uh, if you have a dynamic microphone, you need a lot more gain. Uh, I'm running a dynamic microphone right now. I've got the gain turned up almost all the way there. And so depending on what you have and how much you have, and remember, there's not one Personas interface. There's a whole wide range of them. And so depending on what you have and what mic you have, how long, there's a bunch of factors. If you're running a Studio One, and this is true of the other, there's a couple other good DAWs that do this as well. But I have the ability in, uh, in most of the DAWs that are, you know, the, the better ones, I can add right here, there's 24 dB of additional gain that I can add in. And if I needed to, I could add something else and add, I could go to a little plus sign here, and then I could go through mix. Oops, I spelled that wrong, I gotta learn to spell. I could add another 24 dB right here with this tool, and I can just keep on adding gain. And this is, the, here's the weird thing. The gain coming off the computers is cleaner than the gain that's sitting there within the uh, interfaces. It's nuts. And that's just because I've got one of these 12, but the modern chips adding gain of all the things they can do, of all the math that they ever do, that's just the simplest math for them to do. And so therefore you can add tons of gain via the computer and it's clean. So that means you could, you could if you chose to, turn down your interface and let the computer and your DAW handle it uh, if your DAW will do that. Uh, which mics need phantom power? Uh, you have mic, all the mics that need phantom power are all the condenser mics, the FET mics. Um, but here's the great thing. If it's a modern mic, assuming it's within the last, uh, I wanna say three to five years, you could have phantom power on or off and, and it won't hurt it. But you should notice a big difference. If you turn it on, all of a sudden the signal will go up dramatically. On a dynamic mic, you will not have that. They don't need, they, they tend to have very low output, but they don't have any, they're not taking any power in. The reason the condenser mics are so much louder and put out more power to your interface is simply because they also have power coming in used to power some of their circuits and they bring it up to a reasonable level, okay? Um, would, I up, would I recommend updating the firmware in the middle of a project? To be honest with you, James, I've done that 400 times. I just, when it comes up, I do it. There's a reason they update that, and usually it's a security reason. They hate updating that firmware. They hate it. They don't do it unless they think there's something there that absolutely needs to be done. So, I mean, first off, I've done it, but and then I, I have to admit, I cheat. I always have a backup. Uh, I am actually right now three interfaces deep, and by the way, here's my little strategy. I don't wait till my interface dies. I consider an interface like a wash machine or a dryer or a refrigerator. I've had refrigerators last 20 years on my, in my lifetime and a couple of more than that. I've had refrigerators last for five years. I've had tires, you get a brand new tire in your car and you get a flat in three months. It's, it's more like a, an appliance where they tend to last many, many years. But there are a bunch of factors in there that can cause it to only last two years. If it lasts less than two years, then then they did something wrong, okay? I mean, and they're, they're doing something wrong. That, that should not be the norm. But just because it's not the norm doesn't mean that I don't get the one out of, you know, a few. So, so uh, this little interface here, I know categorically they've sold tens of thousands of these things. So out of that, there's probably 300 or that are that are going to fail prematurely. Plus you have how much heat load were they under? And, and then the electricity, how, what's the quality of the electricity in your area, and a bunch of other factors like that. So I keep a spare one and I buy one way before my last one fails. It's still working when I put it in the box and I get a new one and that's my new one and I have my backup. So I always have a backup of that kind of thing. All right. Um, yeah, Tad's saying he has a Mac, uh, a Mac Port Pro, three and a half with a solo focus backup, okay. 
Uh, switch to mic and one, two, and acquire some odd signs behind the scenes. Yeah, you know what? I don't know about that. Uh, why the solo? But um, it does depend on your software. So see me about that if uh, we can talk about that because that, that would be very specific. Uh, do I think the preamps? Oh, yeah, that's a great question, David. Also, I like your last name, Marantz. Um, in the old days, I worked at, I was, I was 15 when I got my first job at an electronics store. I worked at something called Lafayette Radio Electronics. Now, I was the janitor at 15. I would wash windows. Um, it was where I got my, my first ear training because they had a, a room with all sorts of uh, amplifiers and speakers. It was a high-end speaker amplifier room, stereo back in the day. It was a big deal. And the salesmen were teaching me about stuff. I heard Steely Dan Asia for the first time in my life on, uh, on this incredible set of speakers, probably some of the best speakers in the room. And that was a great experience. So the preamps on the interfaces today are absolutely enough for voiceover and audiobook work. I never recommend any more. If you would go back 10 years ago, absolutely would you have a preamp. That's not the big thing that'll make a difference. You can make 10 times more difference in what's going on by the way you voice and the quality of your room, like your treatment, way more. And it's just, it used to be different, but it is not that way any now. Now, it is not that way right now. And there are still some people, I mean, I'm old and uh, older. That's a better way to put it. I'm older. And there are, I come from the background where we did everything in hardware and we all thought hardware was the way to go for everything. I'm gonna use an external compressor, a hardware compressor, hardware limiter, hardware EQ. I remember multiband EQs and parametric EQ. I mean, we, we, anytime we could do it in hardware, we did it. That's the way to go. That was the way to go. Today, totally different. Software is way better. And uh, uh, here's the thing. I'll put together a $100 interface with somebody and a good mic, I like a decent mic, uh, and a good room, and I'll put them up against anything with anybody using a high-end uh, uh, preamp. It just doesn't help. It does not book you more. Now, the only thing it does do, and this is valid, if I put on a nice suit or wear some, so I'm going out to a special event and Maybe I'm going to the Audis and I want to look more important than I am. And I wear a really nice suit. I've got a $1,000 suit or a $1,500 suit on. And I have shoes that are $300. Back in my corporate days, in my 30s, I was around a bunch of people that were making a lot of money. I wasn't, but they were. And so I would try to keep up with them to at least fit into their league. And I have to admit, if you go out to dinner and you're wearing a $300 pair of shoes, you feel good. Okay? It's like it's kind of like, ha, ha, ha. Uh, maybe I was just a little bit in my 30s, a little over the edge. But it turns out that there is some, hey, if you've got a great mic, if you have a great room, if you have a great piece of equipment, if you're driving around, I bought a used car for my mom. Uh, for those that know, a Scion FRS. I bought a used Scion FRS for my mom, who's in her 80s and wanted a red sports car. And I bought... And I drove it for about a week before I could get it all smog checked and to check it out and do all the details so that my mom wouldn't have any issues with it. And I had a blast driving around in this nice little red sports car that had a lot of power more than, you know, the, the, no, I drive an SUV most of the time. So I'm not, yeah. Anyway, uh, so I'm not all that. I'm, I just, I blend with everybody else. I don't stick out from the crowd. My car, if my car's in a parking lot, it looks like 400 other people's cars there. But it was fun to drive around in this red thing and act like I was more important than I was. It was just fun. And I could accelerate like crazy on it going on the freeway. So when you voice, if you're, if you're into that, it can be fun and it can make you feel good. And by the way, if I feel good, it can help my voicing. All right. So there are people out there that have equipment that's way super cool that doesn't necessarily help them from a like if I blind tested them and had them voice and they didn't know which mic they were on or which interface they were on, they would listen to the results and they'd be happy with it. And it would sound the same. But to be honest with you, the technology has gotten so good. If you get something modern that's within the last year or two in terms of its design, they can they can go way above what uh, what used to be able to be done. So I'm not a fan anymore of, of spending a lot of money. Uh, and, and the dirty secret, I have my son on a, what is it? It's a 
$200 mic uh, when he travels. My son's got a really nice room. My son makes a crazy amount of money doing voiceover. And when he travels, he's on a relatively inexpensive, he's actually on a USB mic when he travels. Now, he doesn't have to do most of his spots while he's on the road, but if he's in a hotel, he's voicing on a $200 USB mic and none of his clients notice that he's not in his main room. Now he knows how to use RX real well. We've, we've tricked out some things, but it's amazing what you can do there. So the next move will impact the preamp hardware? Absolutely. Oh, well, for VO recording, absolutely, it's already there. You don't need a preamp for anything. When you get into instruments, you have such a wide range that at this point, you may need a preamp for instruments. So I'm not, uh, if we're talking voiceover, as we are in this group most of the time, then absolutely preamp is not needed anymore. I, I'll put I'll put hundreds of, I'd love to do some blind tests with somebody that tells, but uh, it's embarrassing. I don't want to tell somebody, yeah, you just spent 500 bucks on something that you didn't need. If they have a preamp, they're proud of it. And that's cool. It's like I'm, I was, I had a good time driving my mom's car. It, 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 it really looked nice. It was really powerful. Uh, it was a cool little vehicle. So probably the last vehicle of her life. And I uh, wanted to make sure she had something cool because that's what she wanted. And she's my mom and that kind of thing. And so it's, it's one of those things where I, I had a blast and I did, I mean, I'd get out of the car and I think, ah, I, I could, I could get used to this. All right. So, but is it any different than me driving my SUV to Costco? Actually, I can fit more stuff in there. I mean, it, they both got me the same place and back. One was more fun. One, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Okay, so that's cool. Um, that Sennheiser MK4, Richard, one of my favorite mics. I have my wife on that. Um, do you think the preamps and interfaces are sufficient? Absolutely. I still just don't think anybody needs a preamp. Um, it, you know, so... And that crystals asked, if ever one of the chips fail in the personas, is it easy to replace the chip or better to replace the whole? I don't know of any preamp of any interfaces right now where where it's cheaper to replace the components inside them than to throw them out and get another one. I just don't know. I can't think of any because they're even a hundred dollars. And really, oh, another tip, bonus. I leave my interfaces on twenty four seven, and so far I've never had one last less than five years. I've had a lot of interfaces. Um, I leave them on 24 seven. I mean, they're designed for that. They're not cooling and heating every single day as they turn on and off. They're always staying at the same temperature year round, 24 hours a day. Uh, I don't, same with my computers. My computers are on 24 seven. My monitors all sleep. Computers stay on 24 seven and have, and they run, uh, I, I mean, I have one computer that's probably run eight years, six years, six years at least. And it's run 24 seven. I, I've just been in the computer business a long time and uh, uh, those components do real well when they stay at one temperature, okay? So uh, let me check here. Um, so there was that. Surge protector, oh gosh, yeah. I have all my audio gear plugged into a surge protector. I actually, so Dale's asked about a surge protector, no. I actually have all my gear plugged into uninterruptible power supplies. Uh, including my router that's up in my house and 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 it goes to the ISP. Uh, I, so I have uninterruptible power supplies, which are surge protectors on steroids. And if you remind me, I'll, we'll do a session on that and I'll show you the ones I like. Not that I'm not, but I've been using those for decades. Um, at, at one point in my life, if I go back before I did voiceover, I did some computer work and uh, when the internet was young, and I actually had a rack of computers sitting in a, in a data center. And so I got to see, uh, it, it probably had 35 drives in it. It had multiple computers, uh, servers that were there, I was doing some things. And so I got to see reliability and what works. And we always had these massive uninterruptible power supplies that would run a whole rack full of computers. And so I've just always had uninterruptible power supplies and I just always will because I because that's a big deal. Uh, for six months, I chased, um, dun, 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 dun. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Scott's saying for six months, he chased cables and hardware. Then he switched to a MacBook and, uh, you know, a $100 mic, the, the modern quality. And it's true. By the way, the new Mac minis are awesome. Um, the, 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 the direction this whole business is going to from a hardware point of view, 
even the least expensive, the stuff that's $1,000 or so is incredible. Things we would have killed for five years ago. There's no way we had that five years ago. Um, so it is one of those things. Oh, yes. <laughs> Somebody's talking about Willie Nelson and his club. Hey, hey, performers, you know, they want a certain look. They want a certain act. That's part of their act. That's how they get in character. Somebody told me Dolly Parton, like she's unrecognizable when you don't see her all made up and she just had a rule. She didn't go out of her house. And I've never seen, I, by the way, I, I have no clue. Um, it's not somebody I, I, I love some of her music. I love her writing. I love a bunch of things, but yes, performers are very often into the way they look and feel. And they are definitely into a, a certain, uh, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is how I want to be. And this is how I want to be perceived. And that does make them feel different. If I was playing drums when I was a young guy, I had a tux. I put on that tux and uh, I knew I was in performance mode. And I had, I mean, I had some nice suits, I had tux. I went and did a gig when I was a young man who, and it, it was a, I wasn't a grunge band, but it was a rock and roll thing. And I had this yellow, yellow striped shirt, sleeveless shirt, um, that I went and did an audition for because I, 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 it was in my head, the look that was appropriate for that gig. And I sure, sure felt different than I normally feel when, uh, so we can all do that with our clothes. Some of, some of us have jewelry, some of us have whatever you, you like a certain look and you see it in guys, you see it in women. It's just, it does make us feel different. Now, if you're going to voice day in and day out and day in and day out, uh, you know, it's not exactly the same. I really, if you wore a suit, 20 every day of the week, then that just becomes your norm and you don't necessarily feel special in it. You feel normal in it. If you don't normally wear a suit and then you put on a suit, hey, that's cool. You get a new mic and for the first month, it's like, oh, cool, cool, cool. A month later, it's like, well, that's just the norm. So there is that whole thing going on there. All right. So let's see. I, I got to go back through, uh, make sure I haven't missed anything. All right. So Here's the deal. Be sure you send me questions and comments and subjects that you want to cover during these sessions moving forward. I didn't even market this very much because I didn't know, you know, and, and I had to decide, oh, what topic do I want to talk? And what I really want to talk about are things that are important to you. So if you send me serving suggestions for topics, then I'll always prepare 15, 20 minutes and then we'll do, right now I'm planning on, yeah, this went 45 minutes. I was planning on 30 minutes. I try to keep it under 45 minutes. And if there's questions, I'll answer them. But I don't want this to be a marathon session. The Johnny Heller and I show, that's going to go an hour every Tuesday. And we plan on doing that at least the next year. Uh, this one, 45 minutes. I may switch it off a of Tuesday. For now, it's Tuesday. But I'll be back next week. Let me look for any possible um, things going on here in the chat. I don't see anything else. But I really, 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 really appreciate you all showing up. It's crazy. The numbers are amazing and appreciated. And I look forward. So as subjects come up in the group, I'm going to put together a, a good list. But send me things and then pass this on to some other people. And hey, Mr. Steve, good to see you there. And uh, I absolutely appreciate you showing up here. This will get better and better and better. I've got some other things planned specifically for this one. I think you'll get a kick out of and will help you. So we'll be talking about hardware. We'll be talking about software. We'll be talking about room treatment. We'll be talking about everything other than being a performer. And remember, I'm a performer first. That's my history. That's where I come from. That's my starting point for all this. The tech is just to support you and to get it out of the way so that we can focus all our energy on being the best performer we can be. And that you, but me, I'll never be to my potential as a performer. You guaranteed will never be at your potential. You could be a better performer next year, the year after, the year after. This little piece of hardware here has gotten to the point where it's so good on this little piece of hardware. I think this thing's right now on sale for 79 bucks. Now I would buy the hundred dollar version of it with two inputs if it's me, but it's so amazingly good that people could be doing world-class $1,000 an hour voiceover stuff and, and it sounds absolutely spectacular. There's so many other factors that are a bigger deal than the interfaces these days. And in terms of preamps, if you're not doing music, 
you don't need them. But uh, so super happy to see you. Be sure to check out the Johnny Heller show. Be sure to tell people about the VO Tech Simplified Facebook group as well. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next week on The Wires. Have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.